Every Thursday evening I went, and every Thursday evening I left unfulfilled. Christians who thought Christianity was about nothing more than being right. They were all big tourists, Jesus fans. I wasn't getting anything out of Bible reading either, not for months, and these guys made me feel better about myself. Ernest guy didn't like or respect any of us. So, who read something from the Bible this week? I'd like to start out by stating that I read a chapter of the Bible every morning, and one... Habit man spent more time reading the Bible than anyone, but he couldn't tell you a thing he'd read afterward. And I always find it very helpful. The book of Proverbs has exactly 31 chapters, so every month with 31 days in it, I read a chapter of Proverbs each morning of that month, and by the end of the month, I once again finish the book of Proverbs. Oh, I never tire of doing that. Surely only the Holy Spirit could have constructed Proverbs so perfectly so as to make that possible. Very laudable. What did you read this week? Oh, a great many passages. Not Proverbs, as this month lacks the necessary 31 days. But I read a chapter of the Bible every morning and one just after supper each evening. What kind of things did you enjoy reading about this week? I took in numerous significant passages about how important it is to always read the Bible. Okay, what are some scriptural reasons that reading the Bible is so important? It is important. I read a chapter of the Bible every morning and one... Yeah, but why does the Bible say it's important to read it? I beg your pardon? Why do you read the Bible? What do you get out of it? As I told you, young man, I read a chapter of the Bible every morning and one just after supper each evening. I read the Bible because the Bible says to read the Bible. And what effect does it have on your life? Well, each day I set aside the time and I sit down in a comfy chair and I, I read a chapter of the Bible every morning and one just after supper each evening with a cup of tea. Which does what? It just it makes me just really see the importance of reading the Bible regularly each day and, and a cup of tea and, and some fiber. Anything else? Do you remember anything from your reading besides how important it is to read the Bible? Like what? To what are you referring? What else is there? I'm confused by the question. Okay, we'll come back to you later. Anyone else read the Bible this week? First, let me start out by saying that I also read a chapter of the Bible every morning and two just after supper each evening. I also Prophecy Man wanted to be a wizard, but never married, and was always uncomfortable talking about sex. He called it that. 24 hours without enjoying. Good for you. What did you read this week? Well, I read a book that is much overlooked and misinterpreted amongst serious Christians. I speak, of course, of the Song of Solomon. Ah, yes, the Bible's book of erotic poetry, immortalizing the union of a man and his woman, and how God created romance and sexuality and all that goes with it. Well, actually, that's a misconception. It only seems to be about that but it is really about things far deeper and far more worthy of inclusion in the word of God. I always thought it was about sex too. Ah, but upon closer reading, a very different interpretation presents itself. Wait, so you agree that it was written by Solomon, the king of Israel? The offspring of David and Bathsheba has prophesied regarding Nathan the prophet, yes, the wisest man who ever lived. And he had sex with over 1,000 women, the Bible suggests. Well, he is certainly credited with having 700 wives and 300 concubines prophesied against for this unbridled excess by... But he's not writing about sex. Clearly not. Cross-referencing with the seven weeks of... So, while the king was on his couch, my nard gave forth its fragrance. My beloved is to me a sachet of myrrh that lies between my breasts. Not about sex? Clearly not.
cross-referencing with the seven weeks in Daniel and the ass's cult and the four witnesses of Revelation 5 reveal that this is a fulfilled prophecy regarding the Antibidian Empire and Charlemagne's turbulent and sinful history with the Hittites, portraying the political union seen in the three ships of Daniel's four evenings in a day and the Beast of Dung with its twelve tails and four feet. This is about the coming together of empires prophesied about in the scriptures and not about that. A garden locked is my bride, a spring locked, a fountain sealed. Awake, O north wind, and come, O south wind. Blow upon my garden, let its spices flow. With the bride's response being, let my beloved come to his garden and eat its choicest fruits. Yes, yes, that passage as well is often mistakenly thought to be about that, but Really, if you consider the moral state of the nation of Israel during the years of exile, and the ships of Shittim in the Gulf, and the fifth week of Daniel, it becomes mu- So, not about sex? Not even remotely. No, this spirit-inspired passage of God's word presents the future state of the New Jerusalem when the two witnesses of Revelation have witnessed and been martyred for the testimony as prophesied by Habakkuk and Daniel regarding the statue made of six different kinds of cheese and the seven years in a day which are a thousand weeks of drought. It provides, in fact, some of the clearest information in the Bible about the rapture. Which is? 11.30 on Saturday. Jerusalem time, of course. Of course. This Saturday? Yes, as seen in the latter half of the 12th chapter of Daniel, particularly in the seven ears and ten foreheads of the four beasts which sprang from among the tents of the sons of Gad. Thanks. That's so weird. I always heard that that book was about sex. Like, Christian sex, but still sex. And, and Christians don't really talk about sex enough, don't you think? So, what would Jesus do? Did you do any Bible reading that we could talk about this evening? Hells yeah, it was extreme. I always knew the Bible was sick, but I didn't know the Bible was like just so sick, right? What did you read? What would Jesus uh, do to I probably couldn't Bible read? Online, right? Put some fat beats on and just, you know, chill with the source of all things. And there's like this site that I always use called BibleFactory.com. I heard about it from this Rock the World youth retreat I was a youth pastor at last summer. Anyways, I guess the spirit was just leading me or something, but I typed in a search on the word extreme just for, you know, and, and you'll never guess. It came up a few times. Yeah, you must know your Bible. It was awesome. In like the whole Bible, it came up like five times in the NIV. In the whole Bible, five times. And then I tried the amplified version and it came up eight times in the whole Bible, which is actually pretty long and everything. Like, amazing. And then I just really felt in my heart about how extreme, you know, God and the Bible really are and about how like extreme we should be as Christians in our like Christian lives and stuff. So what part did you end up reading once you got some hits for your search? Well, I didn't really get into that too much. I was just like way too full of like the Holy Spirit and on fire for God and stuff to, you know, spend the rest of the afternoon like reading stuff, you know. So I just you know, got my hacky and went out and enjoyed the wonders of God's creation with others of like precious chill, you feel me? I feel you. Speaking of feeling and being on fire for God and all, I was just really, really before the Lord this week about what I would spend my time reading. Charisma really hadn't lost his testicles to testicular cancer. It just sounded him. like he had. But gosh, I was just having a real crisis of soul. Monday and Tuesday went by, and gosh, I wasn't able to settle upon the perfect portion to consider no matter what I did. He'd My mention his wife and kids about five times every 20 minutes. It was his way of reminding people that, honest, he wasn't gay. Sarah, mother of our five beautiful children that she homeschools and spends time making healthful organic meals to feed. But gosh, I just wasn't able to hold up my end. And she said to me something she's had to say over and over in our married life, seven years this June. She always says to me, have you prayed? And she said it to me that very night again. Have you prayed? Gosh, I hadn't. Wow. Well, we got right down on our knees and prayed in the spirit and cried in the spirit and spoke in tongues a bit and were covered in love and embossed with healing and were just really, really collated in him. Tears streamed down our faces. And did you read something? 
Well, as you know, my wife Sarah and I coordinate Purge, a center for Christians with uncertainty and commitment issues, oh, and eating disorders. Kind of an Indecisives Anonymous. We might change the name, we're not sure. We just uh, try and reach out to the community and just really teach others about, gosh, how to just really be before the Lord about everything in life. And here we were, well, I was at a loss as to what exact portion God really yearned for me to consider in my anointed, precious time over his spirit-drenched word. And did you end up reading something? Well, you know, tears rolled down our faces as we both came to the same realization together. Like a bolt from the blue, we realized Praise God, gosh, I'm so concerned with reading that perfect portion of scripture that I'm forgetting about who I'm supposed to be reading it for. This isn't supposed to be about me and what I'm reading. It's supposed to be about him. Wow. We just shook our heads with tears running down our faces. Tears of spirit-fueled joy. And then we put on some anointed Maranatha music, kissed the kids and went to bed. I told Phil about it the very next morning at work. He couldn't believe it. Tears rolled down. And did you end up reading anything? Haven't you been listening? Gosh, I had to be shown how much smarter it was when I chose that good part like Martha at Bethany. Praise God. So nothing. Well, perhaps this is as good a time as any to announce that I'm putting together a, a weekend long seminar about that very humbling experience that I've just related to you. We're going to be holding it in the Willow Pine Conference Center in the Black Loom Industrial Park next spring. Ticket packages are going to start at $35. It's going to be great. It's going to present five basic, simple steps. Once I figure out what they are and what letter all the steps are going to start with, how do you feel about P? P's always good, right? As you know, uh, I'm finishing up my doctoral thesis on the book of James this month. James, the epistle about how one's spirituality, one's faith is seen by being lived out in the daily life of the individual. Ah, but is it? I mean, in terms of the dialectical paradigms cognate with the entirety of the canon, especially Bible school read nothing but articles about reading things. I always thought James was about that, and you're saying... Aha, yes. The Barthian approach to exegesis, particularly as regards soteriety and eschatology, makes that view highly suspect. As a Bible scholar, I... You sound like a dictionary man. Spellcheck doesn't even know most of these words. Well, to enter glibly into a discussion of the salvific Christological consubstantiationism and of the hermeneutical creed itself and the reformed neopietism it spawns in so many adherents to Armenian Calvinist fusion theodicy. Did you read any of James this week? Well, granted, I was hard at work parsing citations and reference chains, but did you read any of James? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm... I'm trying to keep my paradigm mansion clear of undue influence by Western translations of the work at this time. With You're a Bible scholar in your fifth year of divinity school. You have read the entire book of James, right? It's five chapters long. Ah, well, unless of course one takes into account the apocryphal 6th and 7th indices and the codexes. Look, you've read the Bible, right? The book, I mean, with the pages? You know, I've always intended to get around to doing that, but I've been so busy with school. Okay, here's what I think we should do. You were all supposed to come here prepared to discuss some specific part of the Bible you had actually read and were able to talk about. Something you read with your eyeballs. Here's what we'll do. We'll decide on a portion of the Bible to read together. You mean like right now, like here? Read? I don't know if I'll be down with that. I didn't know we were going to be doing any reading tonight. And are you including apocryphal passages and fragments from cuneiform Sumerian? Wow, that sounds fabulous, but gosh, how will we decide on what to read? Could it be Proverbs? Perhaps something from Daniel or Revelation? I'm going home. <laughs>